Uh, first of all, we are not uh, a publicly traded company. We're a private company at this point of time. And uh, we're here also at the invitation of uh, Jim Mellon, one of the world's uh, greatest investors, uh, who realized one of the major trends um, that is going to affect all of us, which is aging. And uh, so population is aging, and there are lots of technologies out there that are uh, progressing, converging, and uh, advancing rapidly. And uh, very soon, we will be able to uh, modulate our aging process in more ways than we have previously thought. And for all of you with money and assets, and this conference is all about that, it's very important to understand that uh, you actually don't own those assets. You rent them for the length of your lifespan. So the longer your lifespan, the longer you own those assets. And you can accumulate them and enjoy them. So our company is dedicated to increasing longevity and your lifespan and the length of the time you own the other assets. Uh, and we are focused on uh, applying artificial intelligence to the many areas of uh, uh, research in healthcare uh, and aging. Uh, and we are, um, uh, this year we have been uh, selected as the top 100 AI companies by CB Insights, one of the top analysts in the field. And today I'm going to be presenting some of our work uh, in aging and longevity and uh, other areas of healthcare. So, first of all, our aim is to make aging research and longevity research credible and effective, sustainable, and profitable. So, the money invested in our company and hopefully in uh, uh, the many others that uh, the company called Juvenescence is supporting are going to be multiplied and increased x-fold. I cannot even name the number because everybody is going to benefit from that. But more importantly, it's also probably the most altruistic uh, form of, of investing because you are going to be generating a huge uh, number of quality-adjusted life years for everybody on the planet. Uh, that's uh, in contrast to curing just a single disease where you can generate a limited number of qualities. So our company is focusing on applying artificial intelligence to drug discovery, and we work a lot with the pharmaceutical companies. We also apply uh, artificial intelligence to biomarker discovery, so identifying novel molecular targets uh, within certain diseases that we can address with molecules. We have multiple strategies for rapid validation. And we also have several projects in blockchain technology, unlocking the value of data using blockchain. We haven't done one of those fancy ICOs. Most likely, we will never do one, because uh, it's currently um, a swear word almost, because of low quality projects. But we do use that technology in our business. So as you know, one of the most inefficient industries on the planet is the pharmaceutical industry because the cost to develop a new medical in, uh, entity is increasing rapidly and gradually over time. A lot of low-hanging fruits have, like aspirin have already been picked up. Uh, and uh, it costs uh, a lot to develop a new drug and discover a really good molecule. So it costs about $2.6 billion to develop a drug from preclinical stage to clinical stage uh, to, to, to market, primarily because of 92% uh, failure in clinical trials. And uh, this, this is one of the industries that does not share data very well. So our aim is to use publicly available data and the data coming from the pharmaceutical companies that we work with to transform this industry and apply the latest advances in artificial intelligence that are already transforming the uh, automotive industry. And you've seen those uh, rockets landing back on floating drone, drones. We want to have this technology applied to pharma. And so far, we are doing this successfully. So this technology is called deep learning. Those are uh, multi-layer deep neural networks that function pretty much like a human brain, but uh, in a much more complex manner. And it looks like this year, it's coming to the pharmaceutical industry. So there are multiple companies uh, addressing the, the healthcare industry with AI. Very few are in drug discovery. So in silico is one of the pioneers in this industry. We're in this industry since 2014. Uh, and we've been in Wall Street Journal, we've been in Forbes, we've been very recently, we've been in uh, Nature, uh, uh, we've been featured in Nature Biotechnology, it's one of the really top uh, scientific publications. Uh, and uh, um, uh, 
uh, within the uh, list of the pioneers, we are pretty well known. So I think we have uh, several competitors, but we are pioneering within several areas of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, uh, the pharmaceutical industry. And the pharmaceutical industry is ad adopting uh, artificial intelligence slowly by partnering with uh, some of those companies. So Accenture signed the deal with Sanofi. Uh, Numerate, one of our competitors and partners, um, signed the deal with uh, um, Takeda. Uh, also, Accenture signed the deal with GSK. And uh, we have announced the deal with GSK. We work with four out of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies. And there are also new forms of pharmaceutical companies, uh, new types of pharmaceutical companies coming to market. One is Juvenescence, uh, started by the three uh, very, very senior and very well-known uh, business people and the pharmaceutical drug developers, Gregory Bailey, Jim Mellon, and Declan Dugan, who developed, among others, uh, uh, Zoloft, Lipitor, and Viagra. And I highly encourage you to buy Jim's book called Juvenescence, which outlines the trends in the pharmaceutical industry and in uh, many areas of healthcare that will be contributing to longevity uh, and will generate uh, above market returns. So in the pharmaceutical industry, the major problem is primarily preclinical uh, failure rates. So that's where you start with tens of thousands of molecules and fail most of the time, fail 99% of the time until you get to a phase where uh, you can go to phase one clinical trials into humans, uh, and you still have 92% failure rate. So it takes $2.6 billion to get from here to here. Uh, and if we can do very well here, we can probably generate perfect drugs uh, much quicker and cheaper. So there are two strategies for doing that. One is going through many, many needles in a haystack, and another one is generating perfect needles. This has not been previously possible without AI. So we developed a pipeline where we look for novel molecular targets using many, many data sets coming from uh, uh, all over the world, uh, focusing on gene expression data, genomic data, uh, protein expression data, blood tests. We identify those uh, tiny uh, protein targets uh, for multiple diseases and also in aging. And then we generate novel molecular structures to address those targets. And then we have a predictor of clinical trials outcomes that gives us a little bit more confidence that those molecules are going to work in humans. Uh, then we work, uh, license those to pharma. So we have a pipeline that essentially starts with massive uh, omics databases. We identify new molecules, uh, new molecular targets. Then we generate novel molecules for those targets. And we predict the clinical trials outcomes. So I'm not going to go into detail on this. I'm just going to cover this particular section. Uh, where we did pioneering work. So we were the first ones to um, generate novel molecules using generative adversarial networks. We we're the first ones to validate this. And we were the first to license those molecules already. So just to illustrate what uh, generative adversarial networks are, it's very novel techniques uh, in uh, artificial intelligence that essentially make deep neural networks imagine new things on demand. So this uh, paper, Generative Adversarial Text-to-Image Synthesis, was the first one to describe this concept and uh, illustrate it very well. So you have two deep neural networks competing with each other. Uh, one is trying to trick the other one. And in this adversarial game, new objects are born. And you know, a picture is worth a 1,000 words. Or in this case, uh, a 1,000 words is worth a picture. So you feed, you feed this uh, generative adversarial network with text. For example, this small bird has a pink breast and crown and black primaries and secondaries, and the deep neural network imagines this bird. So this paper was published in uh, 2016 in the summer. Uh, in, the, uh, in December 2016, this paper uh, su superseded the work, and uh, uh, scientists um, from uh, multiple institutions, it's a collaboration, managed to come up with photorealistic images. And now you can also generate from text photorealistic videos, uh, short videos, but can you imagine where artificial intelligence is leading us? So it's not only something that can be very easily automated, like manufacturing jobs that can be replaced. It's also the creative class. So, and we were the first ones to actually apply this particular technique to molecular uh, structure generation. So we essentially asked the deep neural networks to imagine new molecular structures that previously have not existed in nature that address certain molecular targets and cure certain diseases. And um, 
uh, we just experimentally validated some of those. I cannot show you the data. This data will be revealed sometime this summer. And that's when we are going to announce, hopefully, at the uh, ICML, the largest conference on machine learning. And I highly encourage you to go there. It's uh, one of the top events in machine learning in the world. Uh, so we publish a lot. We are not one of those Theranos companies, Theranos likes companies that uh, likes to keep a secret about what we are doing. We publish in top journals like Nature Communications, uh, um, Molecular Pharmaceutics, American Chemical Society, to show the direction where we are going. But of course, we do have a lot of proprietary IP. And you can very easily track us down. Uh, and our business model is to discover new novel molecules using AI. We are at the forefront of AI. We want to focus on this area and uh, license the molecules to big pharma or companies like Juvenescence who are doing pioneering work with novel models and uh, generate revenue this way and reinvest it in AI to go after aging and longevity. So there are lots of models on how to price those deals, and many, many uh, reports have been published. So usually it starts with a small uh, licensing deal where you get an upfront payment and you get uh, uh, lots of biobacks, so, uh, so to speak, where you get uh, royalty payments uh, uh, for those molecules that you license out as they go through clinical trials. So the average size of these checks is about $38 million. And we have multiple, of, uh, multiple leads that we are preparing for licensing that are going through the various stages of validation within the preclinical stage. Uh, so we've got lots of those, uh, more than 2,000 uh, molecules that we can license at this moment, moment. And the average size of the deal is 38 million uh, from the retrospective uh, analysis from analytical reports. So you can imagine how much value is locked in the company just within the pharmaceutical segment. And we are planning to do a round uh, of financing, round B, uh, hopefully facilitated by the, an investment bank in April main timeframe. So if you're interested, uh, send us an email, we'll put you in touch with our financiers. Uh, and we're also uh, participating in the Basel Life Conference. It's an annual conference in Basel, the capital of uh, the pharmaceutical industry, where Roche and Novartis are headquartered. So you're welcome to attend our annual Aging Research for Drug Discovery Forum. It's going to be the fifth annual, and the second AI and Blockchain for Healthcare Forum, which is uh, uh, one of the top uh, AI conferences in healthcare in general. Uh, and you can actually meet us here at Master Investor uh, at the lab. So uh, you can actually see it to believe it. So since we work with data types that are not very easily comprehensible by the human brain, we like to visualize things with just pure images because that's where AI can demonstrate uh, spectacular results. And you can see it and believe it. So that's why we, de we developed a system called Young AI, which kind of tracks uh, your biological age at every level. Uh, we even want to smell aging at some point of time. Currently, it's blood tests, uh, pictures, and transcriptomes, gene expression data that are enabled. And we want you to uh, analyze uh, your pace of aging yourself by looking at what kind of uh, interventions and what kind of uh, behavioral changes make you younger or older. Uh, over time. So this is how it looks like. We just uh, recently released uh, a beta version of Young AI, which tracks your progress and time in images and uh, gene expression data and uh, uh, blood tests. And we are adding new data types uh, all the time. Uh, and um, this is how it looks like. You shouldn't be doing this at home. You should be doing that in a lab. And this is the only way I can do it. I travel about 85% of my time. So I do have no other choice. Uh, but when you work with other data types, it's very well controlled. Um, and again, please come to the AI lab, meet us, talk to us. We have the entire team on the floor. Uh, and find a way to contribute to longevity research, because again, it's the most altruistic thing to do. Of course, it's hugely profitable, and it will be uh, the business of the future. But at this point of time, uh, you should just learn about those technologies, study those, study the academic publications, and read Jim's book, Juvenescence. Thank you very much.